Hi, AnyQuest here. If you dig my recaps, don't forget to subscribe and smash that notification bell. The story kicks off in the Clay's kingdom up in the northwest. We meet our main dude, Noor, who's whipping up some medicine for his sick mom. His mom drinks that stuff and she's grateful, giving props to Noor for always holding her down. Noor tells her he's gonna go feed the sheep real quick, and his mom asks him to swear he won't step outside the barrier. He does so and says that he'll bring back some fruits and rabbit meat to make soup. But then his mama starts coughing like crazy and Noor gets all worried. He tells her he'll boil some water for her, but his mama stops him. She wipes off the dirt from her hardworking son's face, and with a heavy heart, she apologizes for not being able to give him much. She tells him he deserves to choose his own path in life. Next, we see Noor whipping up that soup at night with the rabbit meat and fruits he gathered. When it's ready, he takes it to his mama. He tries to wake her up, but she ain't responding. It hits him hard to find out she's gone. So he digs a grave for his mom right next to his dad's resting place, and he cries silently. After that, Noor spends his time hunting for food, taking care of his cattle, keeping his house in order, and reading some books. Every day passes with him sticking to these routines, and he feels hella lonely when he ain't busy. One day, he comes across an old book in his house. As he reads it, he remembers it's the same book his dad used to read to him back in the day. His dad used to tell him about adventurers, how they could break curses in creepy forests, study magic to become badass wizards, team up to take down massive monsters, and even score an all-curing elixir from the Spirit King. No matter what kind of crisis they faced, they fought to protect the weak, their crew, and straight-up obliterate evil. That got Noor all hyped, and he kept bugging his dad for more stories about them. Back in the present, Noor remembers his mom telling him to decide how he wants to live his life, so he starts thinking about becoming an adventurer. The next day, he lays out a ton of feed for his cattle, says his goodbyes to his mom and dad, and lets them know he's heading to the city on his first trip to become an adventurer. With a bit of hesitation, he steps outside the barrier around his house. After days of traveling all alone, he finally makes it to the city. He enters the city and asks the gate guards for directions to the guild, and they point him in the right direction. Once he's in the city, he's all wide-eyed like a country bumpkin seeing crazy new stuff for the first time and everything gets him hyped. He heads over to the Adventurer's Guild, but the Guild Master tries to brush him off, saying it ain't no place for kids. But Noor ain't having it. He tells the Guild Master that the Gatekeeper sent him here because he wants to become an adventurer. The Guild Master tries to talk some sense into him, saying he's making a dumb decision and his parents would be worried sick. But Noor drops the bomb that both his parents are already dead. When asked for his name, he introduces himself. The Guild Master mentions that Noor should start by going to the training school if he wants to be an adventurer. But he warns him that it might be tough since they never had a candidate as young as him. Noor asks what the training school is all about, and the Guild Master explains that everyone who wants to join the Royal Capital's Adventurers Guild gotta pick a training school. He'll have to choose his adventurer class there and train up, learning all sorts of useful skills to be a real adventurer. Now, Noor being a country bumpkin has no clue about skills. The Guild Master breaks it down, saying they're talking about sword techniques, magic, and all that kind of stuff. This gets Noor all hyped, and the scene switches to him at a swordsman training school. He's thinking he's gonna be like some hero who can take down a dragon the size of a freaking mountain with one swing. He starts training in swordsmanship, and one by one, the other students start unlocking some sick sword skills. Noor keeps training, but he's low-key jealous watching them. Fast forward a few months, and we see everyone else making progress, but Noor's still struggling. He keeps training, but his instructor tells him to quit. But Noor wants to keep training more, but the instructor shuts him down, saying he'd just be wasting his time. According to the instructor, Noor's a talentless loser who's only learned how to parry. He straight up tells Noor to find another path, and suggests checking out the other training schools to unlock his potential. So Noor decides to give the warrior school a shot, thinking it's cool because he can be on the front lines protecting his crew. He goes through some hardcore training there, but still, he ain't making any progress. After grinding for several months, his instructor straight up tells him to bounce because all he managed to do was buff himself up a bit with physical enhancement. The instructor warns him that he's gonna end up dead if he keeps pushing down this path. So Noor decides to give the hunter training school a shot, but he fails there too. The instructor straight up tells him he ain't cut out for delicate tools like bows. Noor ain't letting that stop him though. He tries his luck at the magician training school next. But even after all that training, all he can do is cast a weak flame that can barely light a freaking candle. He ain't done yet, though Noor heads to the thieves' training school. But no matter how hard he tries, he can't get the hang of disarming traps, picking locks, or detecting presences. He's gotta quit that too. It's one fail after another. Finally, Noor gives the cleric training school a shot. But no luck there either. After months of training, all he can do is a basic healing spell that can treat some scrapes. 
He then heads back, disappointed to the guild, and the guild master is shocked to learn that he couldn't learn a single damn thing even after all that training. The guild master straight up tells him he ain't got what it takes to be an adventurer. So this talentless loser leaves the city in disappointment, heading back to his house. He tells his parents that he ain't got no talent for adventuring, but he ain't giving up. He's determined to try harder than anyone else. He crafts himself a wooden sword, remembering what his sword instructor told him about his one skill potentially turning into something else if he keeps honing it. So he focuses on his parry skill training day and night, dedicating his life to it. A year passes by and we find out Noor's trained his parry skill to deflect 10 swords at once. He ain't developed any new skills yet, but he feels like he's moving forward. Three more years pass and now he can parry 100 swords at once, but still no new skills. But our boy ain't giving in. He keeps training non-stop, breaking his sword in the process and healing his scratches with his weak healing skill. Fast forward 10 more years and now Noor can parry a thousand swords at once. He realizes he hasn't missed a single day of training in the past 14 years, but he still ain't learned a damn new skill yet. The next day, Noor decides to hit up the city once again. And the scene cuts to him at the Adventurer's Guild. The guild staff checks out his skills. Parry, physical enhancement, stone throw, feather step, tiny flame, and low heal. She wonders if he's really sure about registering with these weak-ass skills. She starts talking about the training school system and how it can level up his skills, but Noor says that he already studied under all of them already. This puts the girl on the spot and she don't know what to say. Noor peeps the situation and realizes he ain't gonna be able to join the guild. He wonders if there's truly no way for him to get in. Then the guild master rolls up, and he has a hard time recognizing the grown-up Noor. But after a good look, he figures it out. Noor spills about what he's been up to all this time, and the guild master can't believe that after all that training, all Noor got is a slightly stronger parry. The guild master breaks it down for Noor, saying adventurers are ranked from S, the strongest, to E, the weakest. To register as an E-ranked adventurer, you gotta have at least one useful skill. But Noor doesn't even got that. Noor starts thinking it might be time to give up on his dream if that's the case. But the guild master tells him it ain't completely hopeless yet. He mentions there's a legendary rank below E, that not many people know about. Moore gets all hyped because he can join as an F-ranked adventurer, but the guild master lays down some conditions. He says Noor won't be able to take no hunting or gathering jobs outside the city. He'll only be able to do odd jobs within the city's limits. He thinks Noor might not be down for it since it's meant for beggars to put food on the table, but Noor agrees to join the guild as an F-ranked adventurer anyway. The guild master is hella surprised, but he registers Noor when he insists. Noor is stoked to get his adventurer card and starts taking on odd jobs around the city. He completes them one by one, using his weak-ass skills and keeps up his sword training on the side. Days are flying by as Noor keeps lending a hand to people all over the city. One day, he's chilling by a fire and hits him. He's finally living his dream becoming an adventurer who helps others. He knows his skill set ain't gonna get him much more, so he keeps hustling odd jobs around the city. One day, he steps up to help an old lady clean her nasty drains, and she's all grateful for his constant help. Then he lands a job at a construction site, and when he wraps up work, he spots a glow coming from a cave, along with cries for help. Noor bolts to the cave as fast as he can and sees a freaking minotaur about to take out a girl. Turns out, she got some knights trying to protect her, but damn, they stand no chance against that gigantic beast. The monster wipes out the captain of the knights with a single blow, then proceeds to massacre the others like squishing bugs. Blood's flooding the whole area and the girl is straight up horrified. The Minotaur sets its sights on the girl, but Noor uses his rock throw skill to divert the monster's attention to himself. The Minotaur starts chasing Noor, lunges at him, but he manages to parry its attack. The Minotaur keeps coming at him and Noor keeps parrying every damn attack. But with each move, his sword takes a beating. Noor knows he needs to find an opening, but he also knows he ain't got the offensive skills to take down the Minotaur, even if he finds one. He notices the girl's still there, and when the Minotaur tries to attack her again, he busts out his feather step skill and rushes in to save her, wrecking his sword in the process. He figures, even if he can't be the top-tier adventurer, he's gotta hold it down for the girl right in front of him. He recalls his old man's words about the true meaning of being an adventurer. The Minotaur swings at him once more, but Noor parries like a boss. This time, the Minotaur's axe slips from its hands and boom, the axe beheads the monster. Noor realizes if the fight had gone on any longer, he'd be six feet under, so it hits him again how much talent he lacks. The girl thanks him for saving her life and asks for his name, but Noor says he ain't worth remembering and bounces. Some knights show up to rescue the girl, and we see Noor back in town. He can't believe he almost got taken out by a random cow roaming in the streets, and he's dead set on training even harder. A while later, a cleanup crew rolls up to move the Minotaur's ass out of there, along with all the folks who died trying to fight it. 
and Princess Lin feels hella guilty about all the deaths. Right then, her knight ends comes rushing up and apologizes for not sticking by her side when she went into the damn dungeon because it's her job to protect Lin. But Lin tells her it ain't her damn fault. This was just some basic ass trial for the throne succession. So it wouldn't make sense to force her knight to tag along. Just then, another knight tells Lin they're gonna head back to the castle soon because Lord Rian wanna have a chat with her. And she already knows what that shit gonna be about. Back at the castle, Lord Rian just finished talking to Lin trying to understand what the hell happened, but none of it making sense to him. The only way a minotaur could end up in that part of the dungeon is if someone straight up summoned it with magic. And the knight agrees with that assumption. He thinks the whole incident got something to do with a merchant found dead at the scene with a ring. And when they checked it out, they realized the damn magic stone in the ring got a crazy high level of purity, something you don't normally see on the market. A minotaur ain't no joke, it's an A-level demon. So no random rich dude could just buy something that can control one. Plus, the crest on the ring suggests it came from the magical empire of Doritas. So Rian think the Doritas people are behind this shit because they always had beef with him. But even then, the fact that they straight up tried to assassinate Lin and didn't even bother getting rid of the evidence, it gotta mean they're trying to bait Rian into starting a war so they can take over the damn dungeon. Aside from that, Rian also gotta think about the guide who saved Lin. According to the reports, dude managed to woot the Minotaur's ass in seconds with just a broken sword. And on top of that, the castle spies tried to tail him when he was leaving, but the dude straight up vanished right before their damn eyes. Rian can't believe what the hell he's hearing, so he's hella curious about finding out who this mysterious warrior is. Meanwhile, Noor just rolled back into the damn guild and the guild master looking hella surprised because he thought Noor got himself killed. He heard about a demon popping up in the dungeon, and that shit was right next to the construction site where Noor was working. So he figured Noor must have bit the dust. Noor apologizes for causing worry and explains that he had some shady folks tailing him last night, so he had to shake them off and went home without reporting what happened. The guildmaster saying Noor is lucky to be alive because a minotaur is a damn demon so strong that even an A-rank adventurer would get insta-killed if they had to face it. Noor is still clueless about the fact that the guildmaster talking about the same damn creature he slayed. So he asks what happened to this demon and the guildmaster tells him some mysterious dude took it down. Noor still ain't connecting the dots and just goes on with reporting the jobs he finished today. The guildmaster hands over his payment but reminds Noor he is better off getting a regular ass job because he'd make more dough that way. But Noor doesn't give a damn about the money, long as he gets to be an adventurer. Right then, Lin sneaks up behind Noor and says she is damn glad she finally found him. She apologizes for invading his privacy, but she really wanted to meet him again, so she used her long-distance detection skill to track him down. Noor assuming she must be some thief-class adventurer if she got a detection skill. But Lin says she actually a magician, she just has skills in all kinds of classes, even if they are basic. The guildmaster and the other folks in the guild start recognizing Lin, so she asks if she and Noor can talk outside. But before they can leave, the guildmaster grabs Noor and asks what the hell he did to make Lin want to talk to him. Noor says he ain't done no illegal shit, meaning he ain't in no damn trouble. So the guildmaster tells him to go with Lin and make sure he don't do nothing stupid. Outside, Lin uses one of her skills to cloak herself and Noor so nobody can see them. And once they find a secluded spot, Lin apologizes again for intruding on Noor, knowing a dude with his power probably got a lot on his plate. Noor says it's all good and Lin starts off by thanking him once again for what he did because not only did he save her life, but he also saved a whole bunch of people in the nation. Noor ain't thinking he deserves all that hype because all he did was take down a damn cow. Hell, he's pretty damn sure Lin could handle it on her own if he hadn't shown up. No clue how he came to that conclusion when he saw that same cow slaughtering a bunch of knights. So Lin tries to make him understand that she would have been six feet under if he hadn't come to rescue her. Nor still ain't think he did much to help her, but he accepts her thanks. But then Lin talks about offering him a reward to show her gratitude for his help. Nor straight up tells her that a simple thank you is all he needs, so she doesn't gotta give him nothing else. Lin keeps insisting on giving Nor a reward, and now her old man wanna meet him too. But Nor deadass don't want any damn reward. Lin try one more time to get him to accept, but Nor standing his ground with his no reward policy. Lin getting desperate, asking if there's anything she can do for him, or if she can even get him his own territory. But Noor just says he doesn't want none of it. Lin starts crying and telling Noor he gotta accept her gratitude and she ain't moving from this spot till Noor says he'll accept something from her. Noor remembers a time when he pulled this same tantrum move he had a cleric to train him. And because he doesn't want Lin standing here for hours, he ends up agreeing to meet her old man but he still doesn't want no fancy ass gifts. Lin is happy as hell to hear that, so she says Noor should stick close to her, and she'll use her concealment skills to make sure nobody spots them. Eventually, Noor brought to Lin's house. 
and as he gets led inside, Lin asks for his name, which Noor is happy to provide. But Noor is still clueless about who Lin is, so she apologizes for being rude and straight up introduces herself as Lindbergh Clays. But damn, that name way too damn long, so she usually goes by Lin. Once Noor peeps this house, he finally get why Lin wasn't kidding about being wealthy. It all makes sense why the guild master was sweating bullets about him making a fool of himself. While they strolling, they bump into Inns and Lin is hella happy to see her. So she runs over and asks where her old man is. Inns tells her he's in a meeting with Rian right now, so he is a little busy. But aside from that, she is curious about the dude standing over there. Lin explains that Noor is the one who saved her life, so instead she'll lead them to Lin's old man. Noor ain't never heard of a royal knight, so he figures Inns must be some kind of homemade knight. One of the folks who loves rocking armor for some weird reason. He also notices that Inns ain't too fond of him, but he got no clue why. While they strolling, they come across this dude chilling by the window. Soon as he spots them, he gets up and asks what Inns up to, and who the hell this random guy is. Inns tells Gilbert to put his damn spear away because Noor is Lin's guest. And it ain't cool to be pointing weapons at guests. Gilbert catches on that Noor must be the dude who saved Lin's life, so he lowers his weapon. Inns asks him to join them in the room because she could use all the support. Gilbert already got a bad vibe about Noor, and Noor can sense that things ain't looking too good for him at this rate, but he keeps on walking. In the throne room, the king is in the middle of a meeting with Reen, and he is hella pissed because it's clear that Doradas don't give a damn about honoring their peace treaty. Reen been expecting this shit ever since the last meeting with the king of Doritas, when he straight up demanded they hand over the rights to the dungeon. Obviously, the demand got rejected, but ever since then, the king of Doritas has been plotting their downfall. Right then, Lin and the crew show up in the throne room and Lin, all hyped up, goes over to greet her brother and dad. Inns and Gilbert kneel to show respect for the king, but Noor just keeps on walking. Rian notices that Lin wearing that disguised cloak, meaning she must have snuck out without permission. But she says she had no other way to find the man who saved her. The king realizes she's talking about Noor, and Noor apologizes for showing up looking all messy, but Lin insists on coming here as soon as possible. He also mentions he ain't no fancy aristocrat or nothing, so he ain't familiar with all the proper etiquette for these kind of situations. He might accidentally say something rude, but the king tells him it's all good because it's easier to speak without worrying about etiquette. The king reaches out his hand to Noor and formally thanks him for saving Lin's life. Noor brushes it off, saying it ain't no biggie, so a simple thank you is plenty, but the king ain't letting Noor off the hook without a proper reward. He tells Noor he can ask for any amount of cash or land he wants, but Noor still don't want nothing. The king is taken aback, but he ups the ant by offering Noor half of all the treasures they snagged from the dungeon. Rian thinks a reward like that is hella too much to be given to just one dude, but Noor still ain't feeling it though. The king doesn't know what the hell to give Noor because he keeps shooting down everything. So he goes over to his throne and grabs the sword hanging on it as a gift for Noor. Rian doesn't think it's a dope idea to give away such a valuable sword. But the king says it's cool because he never uses it anymore and ain't nobody gonna find out as long as he swaps it with a fake. He hands it to Noor, and as soon as it's in Noor's hand, he can feel how damn heavy it is. From Reen's reaction, Noor can tell that sword is worth mad bucks, and he ain't down to accept no extravagant gifts. But the king says it's just something he picked up back in his adventuring days, so it's all good for Noor to take it. Noor agrees, so the king asks him to give it a test swing. Noor goes along with it and swings the sword in the air, unleashing a crazy amount of force and surprising everyone around. The king props Noor up for swinging the sword with just one hand, but he's got a request too. He wants Noor to help train Lin on how to be an adventurer. But Noor says there ain't nothing he could possibly teach someone as talented as Lin, and besides, Noor thinks Lin should be the one to decide something like that for herself. After that, Noor figures it's time for him to bounce, and as he's dipping, he realizes something special about his sword. It's the perfect shape to fit in the gutters he usually cleans. So he's gonna give it a try tomorrow morning. Before he bounces, Inns rolls up on him and says she wants to chat. First off, she apologizes for her rude behavior earlier because it was completely uncalled for. But Noor says he doesn't mind at all. Her job is to protect the Clay's family no matter what, so she's hella grateful to Noor for saving Lin's life. And to show her appreciation, she promises to have Noor's back if he ever needs help. Noor doesn't want to go back and forth about this, so he just accepts her offer and says he'll hit her up if he ever needs anything. On another note, Inns also warns Noor that he better not talk to the king so casually again because even if the king let it slide this time, she ain't gonna let that disrespect fly next time. Noor says he gets it, so Inns in a good mood and asks him for his name. When she hears his name is Noor, she seems hella shocked. Noor asks if he did something wrong again, but Inns says it's nothing and bounces. Noor is about to bounce too, but gets stopped by Gilbert, who wants to throw down and challenge him to a fight. 
Gilbert's leading Noor through some hallway and Noor is wondering where the heck they going because he just want to go back to work. But to his surprise, Gilbert brings him to a training arena for a mock duel between them. That shocks Noor, because he ain't sparred with nobody since his training school days. Gilbert grabs this wooden pole for practice and spills that he's hella famous in the capital, then asks Noor to choose his weapon too. Noor sees this as a sick chance to learn from a vet, so he chooses a regular wooden sword. He knows he ain't gonna be much of a match for Gilbert, but he's still gonna give it his all. Gilbert makes the first move, thrusting his staff at Noor, but Noor dodges that shit with ease. He can see how smooth and efficient Gilbert's moves are, showing off all that training he's done. But for some reason, it looks like Gilbert's moving in slow motion to Noor. He figures Gilbert's just holding back his strength because he's a noob like him. Noor calls a timeout and tells Gilbert to quit holding back so damn much. So Gilbert decides to get serious with him. He steps up the intensity, but it ain't fast enough to overwhelm Noor. Every time Gilbert misses an attack, Noor finds openings in his defense. On the flip side, Gilbert's getting frustrated because he can't land a hit on Noor. So he pulls out this complex attack, changing his trajectory at the last second, trying to catch Noor off guard. He forces Noor to jump and plans to strike him down as soon as he lands. But damn, Noor dodges that attack too. He tells Gilbert to step up the pace because he's feeling comfy with the current intensity. That stings Gilbert's ego because he was already going all out. Noor starts realizing he might actually be stronger than Gilbert, but out of nowhere, the elite guard busts out his special move and aims it at Noor. The attack comes dangerously close, but when the dust settles, Noor is standing in front of Gilbert no more. He dodged that shit and moved to the side. But after seeing the destruction from Gilbert's attack, Noor says he ain't down to fight no more. Noor bounces out of the palace with that, but his mad skills got the other knights buzzing. They can't believe he dodged their captain's special attack. Some of them think Noor only survived because Gilbert was using a practice spear. Otherwise, they believe a genius like him could defeat anyone he wants. Hearing the words takes depressed Gilbert on a trip down memory lane. Dune always had mad talent with his spear, and traveled all over the kingdom, battling powerful peeps and taking them down. Ain't nobody who could even come close to challenging him, and that shit got him bored as hell. So he rolls up to the capital and joins the knights, hoping to fight monsters because they're stronger than humans. But even monsters ain't no match for his strength and skill, and the boredom keeps eating at him. Then one day, while he's chilling like a villain, the master of the sword school shows up. This dude was the one who trained Gilbert back in the early days. Gilbert rants about how boring it is to be so damn strong and wishes there were more peeps as strong as the master so he could have some fun fights. The master just tells him that one day, one of the students will rise above him and Gilbert hopes that shit happens while he's still alive because that might be the only way to cure his boredom. Now as Gilbert thinks about the dude who one-hit code a minotaur, his mind's all over the place. From the get-go, he knew Noor was an interesting cat, but he couldn't sense anything remarkable about his strength. But when they sparred, he realized Noor was way stronger than he appeared. When Noor tells him to kick up a notch, Gilbert busts out his special attack, faster than the speed of sound, knowing full well no human could survive that shit. But Noor dodges the attack and Gilbert feels straight up defeated. And on top of that, Noor ends the fight right there. Gilbert thinks Noor did it to save him from embarrassing himself in front of the troops. And before bouncing, Noor tells him he's looking forward to their next meetup, which is Noor's way of saying, get stronger. Now Gilbert thinks he finally found someone who can make his life a bit more fun. On the other hand, Noor has no clue how high Gilbert is praising him. He uses body strengthening and feather step skills to dodge Gilbert's ultimate attack at the last damn moment. If he was even a second late, he'd be a gunner. Noor thinks Gilbert purposefully adjusted the speed of his attacks, so Noor could barely dodge it. And he's grateful to Gilbert for showing him he still has a ton of training to do. The next day, Noor starts scrubbing the drains with the epic sword he got from the king, and damn, he was stunned by how dope that sword performs. Later, he's chilling up in the forest because his work at the construction site got put on hold after the whole Minotaur incident. He's trying to figure out how to kill time till the job's back on track, and he's also trying to put that massive sword to good use. He's thinking maybe it could be a sick paddle or a pizza shovel or even a grill plate. But damn, he ain't got the resources to start those businesses. So he tries busting out his fire magic, but that shit is weak as hell for starting a barbecue. Then he hears footsteps creeping up behind him, and he turns around to see Lin standing there looking for him on purpose. Noor asks how he can help her and Lin asks to be his apprentice so she can learn from him while serving him. She all year to do whatever he wants, but Noor shuts that down real quick. He tells her he can't teach her shit because he's self-sufficient in everything. Lin tries tempting him with cash for his training, but Noor makes it clear he doesn't want anything. She keeps pushing, saying she's gonna be helpful to him, but Noor can't get through to her. So Lin decides to prove herself by showing off her magic powers. She summons icicle lances and shoots them at herself, then straight up burns them with some powerful fire spell. 
Next, she chops down a massive tree with a tiny dagger using some crazy skill. And then she busts out a magic sword move to blow up a tree behind Noor. She thinks Noor gonna accept her as his apprentice after that sick display, but he's still in having it. He finally realizes Lin is giving him way too much credit, and he wonders how the hell he gonna make her understand that he ain't shit compared to her. Noor decides he gonna flex his skill and creates this tiny fireball to straight up prove to Lin that he is a loser. And damn Lin hella shocked when she peeps it. She starts walking home with that in her head, thinking about the tale of the talentless boy all the teachers used to spit. Back in the day, Lin just thought it was a cautionary tale because she never believed no 12-year-old boy could handle the brutal training from all six schools for a full term. Even seasoned warriors had a hard time sticking around that long. But one day, the baddest magician who runs the magic school shows her his tiny fire skill. And then he straight up amps it up to show off his mastery. That magician tells her it takes decades of grind to make that tiny flame skill grow. That's why when Noor shows Lin his tiny fire today, she left speechless, because that shit is way bigger than the baddest magician in the whole damn world. He tells her that's all he can pull off, and his skill in other areas is on the same level. Only Lin knows that the size of that small fire speaks volumes about Noor's ability. And she figures he is straight up master in the other branches too. Now she feeling hella ashamed because she was all proud of her high level skills she just learned. She realizes that even though Noor is way stronger than her, he never brags about his power. Dude even takes care of the most basic tasks to help others. She thinks Noor's mind and character are as strong as his body and ain't nothing gonna phase him. As the princess, she gonna have to lead the kingdom alongside her brother one day and she gotta be strong. She wants to learn how to be strong from Noor, so she reaches out again when he's coming out from a restaurant after eating. Lin tells him she fully gets how immature and vain she was and now she is even more fired up to learn from him. She believes his strength gonna be the foundation for their kingdom's peace and prosperity. So she accepted him as her master, but Noor is hella troubled by it, and he just wanna leave and head home. The scene switches to Rian wondering why his dad would hand over the black sword to some random dude. He breaks it down that back when his old man was out adventuring, he dove deep into the labyrinth of the lost with the big shots to snag that sword after years of risky moves. This blade is crafted from materials never seen before, tougher than Orchalcum and Mithril. Since no skill or trick could even make a scratch on it, he got the rep of being the indestructible blade. The real puzzler was how it ended up in such a beat-up state. Ming figures it ain't something you just toss around casually. He figures his dad must have clocked the dark vibes creeping over the land. He figures the old man must have bet on that dude, thinking he might be the ace up their sleeve against whatever's rolling their way. Next up, you peep Noor grabbing a bite at a food stand chilling with Lin. He checks if she's good being out here, and she's cool with it. Noor mentions he's thinking of hitting the guild after eating, and she agrees, calling her master. Noor's thrown by this, feeling like he ain't worthy of that title. The more he tries to clear it up, the deeper the hold gets. While he's eating, he figures she should notice he's just regular when she checks out the odd jobs he's on. Cut to him at the guild, and the guild master is surprised to see him with Lin once more. On the low, he asks Noor what's the deal, and Noor says it's complicated. The guild master senses Noor might not be up for talking about it, so he skirts around the topic. But Noor says he needs to talk about this because even he's fuzzy on the situation. The guild master brushes it off thinking Noor's here for a job and Noor requests something for a duo. The guild master explains that since Lin's a B-ranked adventurer, they could take on a goblin hunt quest outside town if they team up. Noor's hyped to hear this recalling that goblins are like training dummies for adventurers. He's shocked he can take on a job like that, feeling stoked. But he wonders if it's cool to lean on Lin's rank like this. He feels it might be too selfish to ask her to roll with him. Especially after telling her to bounce before, and he not even being sure if Lin would want to team up with a weakling like him. Lin asks if everything's cool, and Noor wonders if she's cool with him leaning on her rank. Lin's totally down with it, saying he can use whatever she's got. Noor still feels kinda guilty relying on a young girl like her, but he's hyped to finally chase one of his dreams, so he hears up to head out to find those goblins. The guildmaster reminds him that he didn't even spill where the goblins are at, so he swings back. The guildmaster greenlights the mission for them, cautioning Noor to stay sharp, because goblins might be weak, but they ain't no joke. Noor nods in agreement, and the guildmaster points them to the goblin spot. He tells them to tally their kills when they get back, and to bring back those right ears as proof or they ain't getting paid. Lin peeps that the goblins are chilling in the forest of beasts. The guildmaster mentions they've been scarce lately, so if they strike out, they can snag some herbs instead. They get it, and head out for the quest. Next scene, they're at the city gates, get their papers checked by the guards, and get the green light to dip out of the city. Then they hit up the forest of the beasts and Noor clocks that this place is nothing like the south woods he's used to. He thinks even the trees are on stairways here and Lin schools him that the whole ecosystem's different too. 
Nora asks her what's the deal with goblins, and she explains they mostly munch on fruits and critters, but they ain't afraid to throw hands at folks. If they ain't kept in check, they breed like crazy, and when they're hungry, they hit up human spots. That's why the capital sends adventurers to keep their numbers in check. But the forest divide clicks with goblins, so they can't just wipe them all out. She drops knowledge that this spot's got rare plants and critters, making it a hot spot for newbies to stack some cash. Nor gets it, and Lin's glad she aced the explanation, thinking he was testing her. Nor sees Lin's got smarts to match her strength, and he feels like he ain't got much to teach her. They push deeper into the forest, and some light fog surrounds them. Later on, Lin taps into her detection skill to scope out for goblins, but she's coming up empty, which is odd because they usually bump into some by now. She figures the word on the street about fewer goblins might be legit, then she senses something deeper in the woods. She suggests they investigate, and they push even further into the forest. The place gets darker with all the thick plants around. Lin schools Noor that this kind of terrain is where goblins thrive. Suddenly, she looks shocked, and Noor asks what's wrong. She reveals that whatever she sensed was right in front of them, but now, poof, it's gone. Noor thinks it might have been a sick monster that croaked on its own, which Lin agrees could be the case, but they decide to check it out anyway. They can't find anything on the ground, but Noor spots a goblin corpse floating in the air. Lin senses trouble and casts her uncover spell, and damn, they uncover a massive hidden goblin emperor. Lin tries to eye the beast, but before she can, Noor jumps in thinking it's just a goblin, shocked at how much bigger it is than he expected. He can't wrap his head around how these are supposed to be the weakest monsters when this thing's staring him down with green skin, two legs, and a mean glare, just like goblins are known for. He can't believe adventurers treat this as small fries, noticing Lin shaking. He figures she's still green in the combat game despite her skills, so it's understandable. Lin, though, knows it's a goblin emperor, a subspecies of the goblin king, the top tier monster. She explains these monsters are man made, born from forbidden research. This one can chow down on its own kind, sucking up their mana to level up. Noor's clueless about all this, telling Lin not to trip since it's just a goblin. She wonders if Noor saw this coming, and this is why he tagged along, so she recalls his odd reaction when goblins were mentioned. And then Noor suggests they take down this beast together. Lin's all in, and they gear up for the showdown. The monster keeps coming at them with tree attacks, but Noor skillfully parries the strikes. It strikes again, but Noor deflects one of the trees with his parry. This gives Lin a chance to cast Wind Cutter and Icicle Dance spells, but the monster is too fast for her to land a hit. Noor starts to question if goblins are naturally this fast. Next, the goblin throws a tree at Lin, but Noor jumps in to save her by deflecting it away. More trees come flying to him, but he manages to parry them as well. Lin notices the monster's wounds healing rapidly, surprised by the speed of the goblin emperor's recovery. Spotting a mana stone on its forehead, she realizes this is the source of its extraordinary healing. Lin instructs Noor to try and remove the stone, but the monster launches a barrage of trees at him. Unable to deflect them all, Lin steps in and uses her wind blast to send the trees back at the monster. Although the monster gets injured, it swiftly heals each time, confirming the mana stone's role in its healing. Noor understands they can't keep up like this and doubts they can take out the stone, even with Lin's abilities. With a bold idea in mind, Noor asks Lin to channel her wind blast at his back. Lin hesitates because this spell is powerful enough to blast through a castle wall. Noor reassures her that she'll be targeting his sword, not him directly, as their only chance to outpace the monster. Lin agrees and casts the wind blast on the sword, propelling Noor forward at top speed. The velocity is too much for him, so he combines physical enhancements with Feather Step. Pushing himself to the limit, he ends up breaking a bone, but quickly mends it with low heal magic. Then he leaps and strikes the monster's forehead, causing the crystal to pop out as he tumbles to the ground. The monster's in agony from the attack, and Lin checks on Noor, making sure he's good. He says that he is fine and tells her to handle the rest. Noor suggests she puts the monster down easy, but she goes and uses Hell Flare, burning it alive, not knowing that's a brutal way to go. Noor is just as clueless for not catching on, so he says a prayer after taking the monster out in the worst way possible. He figures he's had enough goblin hunting for a minute, realizing he should stick to his usual gigs and not get too ahead of himself. He decides he needs to level up before taking on something like this again. Later on, Rian learns about the Goblin Emperor. He checks out the mana stone they got from the monster, seeing that a goblin emperor with a stone this size must have been massive. Turns out it was way bigger than a goblin king, and he thinks it might be linked to the magic empire. The mana stone turns out to be the demon's heart from the holy theocracy of Mithra, and he wonders how his sister's doing. The shadow company tells him she's only got minor scratches, and Rian's amazed they took it down with so few injuries. The shadow company mentions the monster was using a high-level concealment spell to hide. According to Lin, it must have been there for at least two to three days. Ray's worried even the Shadow Company missed the concealment spell and wonders how something that big got into their turf. He figures their sensors should have caught it if it was summoned and wonders if there were any warnings. 
He learns goblin activity has been dropping in the area and thinks it might be going down in other spots too. A shadow company gives him a report on weird incidents in the last three months, and he tells them to keep digging. Lin and Noor head back to the guild master to give their report. The guild master is shocked that Noor took down a goblin. Noor admits it was a tough fight, crediting Lin for their victory. But Lin insists Noor did the heavy lifting. Anyway, Noor feels it was a big day for him as he had his first hunt today. Listening in, the guild master assumes Noor was watching while Lin handled the action, thinking it was the right move given Noor's strength, and thinking it must be a good learning experience for him. Noor agrees, mentioning he didn't expect goblins to look like that. Noor points out the gem on the goblin's forehead was its weak spot, surprising the guild master. He's used to mana stones being in the heart or throat and starts wondering if what they faced was truly a goblin. Noor turns to Lin for confirmation and she backs up her master's claim that it was indeed a goblin. The guild master speculates it might have been a rare goblin, pondering if they kept an ear as proof. Noor realizes they forgot about that detail, admitting they actually burned the damn creature. That's it for this video guys, if you like this new series, leave a like for the next episode. And subscribe for more Anon content. Thanks for watching, bye bye.